Uh, hi everyone, thank you for coming to our session. Um, this is a session that is a little newer to Nate and I, but we did it last year at Bad Camp and everybody really liked it, so we thought we'd make it a little more official. We're going to go through um, everything that's happened in the world of backdrop since the fork up to the present, and then we'll talk a little bit about our plans for the future. And this should be really useful for those of you who are coming from Drupal and are wondering what have we been doing for the last four years. You'll get to see all of the great stuff that's been going on in the backdrop world and why this is a fork and not just long-term support for Drupal 7. Well, first of all, how many people are not familiar with backdrop at all? Like, you know, this is kind of the first introduction for them. Okay. Four, four people or so. Okay, excellent. Well, Wait, can, can it, how many of you are running Drupal 7 sites currently? Everybody. Well, almost. That's great. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be covering a little bit about how Backdrop actually was created as well, um, but mostly we're going to be covering all of the progress that Backdrop has uh, seen over the last five years. Four and a half. Four and a half. Sure. <laughs> all right, let's go. Do I get to push the button? Oh, maybe we should talk about us. Who are you? Oh, yeah. I'm Nate. I'm Jen. Uh, I'm uh, one of the project founders along with Jen. Uh, I've been doing Drupal for 12 years, I think, 12 13, and a half years maybe. And a half, 13 and a half. Uh, and uh, um, I'm most well known for doing things like the web form module in uh, Drupal 7, uh, and I was also the file and image system maintainer. Uh, and I wrote the dialogue system that's in Drupal 8, and uh, was an advocate for putting CK Editor into Drupal 8. So got a long history with Drupal, uh, though during that process um, I kind of find myself uh, diverging uh, mentalities around where Drupal is heading versus where I had always wanted Drupal to be heading, and that's how we ended up uh, where we are with Backdrop. Uh, I'm Jen Lampton. I am a little younger in Drupal years than Nate. I've only been around for 12 and a half years instead of 13 and a half years. Um, I also uh, have a little bit of invol uh, involvement in Drupal core. I'm later to that than Nate is. I was involved in the usability team, um, doing a couple of studies uh, uh, early in the Drupal 7 cycle all the way up to early in Drupal 8 and through that process I got really passionate in about making the software easier for people to use and easier people to, for people to learn and by doing that I somehow ended up a core initiative lead for Drupal 8 and started organizing people to put twig into core and it was through my work in that, that trying to make Drupal easier to learn um, that I realized that it wasn't ever going to be the product that I wanted it to be, and so that's how we ended up making Backdrop instead. So, where we are today, I guess Backdrop's five years old. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying four and a half, but uh, somewhere around there. Uh, depends, I guess, when you start counting. Uh, we've released 13 versions, so um, unlike Drupal, Backdrop has a very strict scheduled release cycle. So every four months we have a new version. Whether there's new features in it or not, it, gets, it comes out like clockwork. So uh, since the 1.0 version, we've done that 13 times, and every single time it has been delivered on time, though with varying amounts of functionality. Yeah. So on version 1.12 right now. So yeah, a little history as to how Backdrop got started. So let's, yeah, five, <laughs> five years, 12 versions ago, uh, we kind of uh, poorly executed uh, this manifesto that said why we were doing what we were doing. And it was um, largely created kind of out of frustration um, at the time, which wasn't, uh, um, you know, we'd been toying around with the idea um, and uh, trying it out at, at various uh, camps, seeing if people were like, ah, how would you feel about this? Um, and it, it, the, the stimulus for it was actually my work on CK Editor when I posted up a full version of the module and it was ready to be committed and then it was like, actually, huh, not anymore because we don't write modules that way anymore and they rewrote the whole thing. Uh, and I continued rolling along with that for a little while, but I realized like, this is going to, this is going to, honestly, it's going to cost a lot. Like changing every module that is in existence from what I had written to what was being proposed or what the new way of, of writing things from a purely technical perspective I was like oh my gosh this is gonna cause so much trouble <laughs> um, and so we made the fork uh, in uh, September of 2013 uh, which actually yeah well, that was like re really starting from the beginning people found the fork much faster than I thought and that was unexpected because we didn't have our 
plans fully formulated and written down. So if you guys ever fork a software project, I suggest you write down your thoughts first and then create the GitHub repository. Um, so because if people find a fork with no explanation, they freak out. Well, and everybody and everybody jumps in bringing their own ideas. Like we got everybody from Drupal coming over and saying, "That's great. Drupal 8 didn't do what I wanted it to do, so let's try again." Uh, and I was like, "No, no, that's this is not not what we're going for. It's not so that we can rewrite Drupal differently, a new way. <laughs> that's not what we're going for. We're not rewriting things." And everybody's like, "Oh, well, that's not what I wanted." <laughs> uh, Let's see, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, so the manifesto uh, looked kind of like this. Uh, everyone was panicking. Yeah, everyone was panicking, <laughs> it, despite our uh, big bold letters up at the top telling them don't panic. Uh, next slide. Um, but if you read through the manifesto, you can still find it. I think it's actually a blog post, the first blog post on backdropcms.org, uh, now running on backdrop instead of just being an HTML page. Um, these are the points that we made in the manifesto. Uh, preserving the Drupal audience, or some Drupal audience that Drupal historically had been catering to, like a, a, a wide audience, but small sites were a large part of that. Hobbyists had driven Drupal from its origin story, and nonprofits and political campaigns actually were really Drupal's bread and butter for a long time. Uh, small scale Drupal being uh, accessible to uh, individual sites, small teams, uh, being a product for end users, catering more towards uh, user interfaces and making it so that end users could manage their sites themselves without the help of developers. Uh, a different release cycle because Drupal 8 was, I think, uh, in its like sixth year of development at that point, and it would be another two and a half years before Drupal 8 was actually released. And so, this, this the release cycle was at the forefront of our mind. Um, and we, we did a call to contribute on GitHub. So, um, yeah, can we go back one more time? Just to uh, recap, like, really, this is not too far off of where we stand today. Um, the biggest thing that we have uh, to address why Backdrop exists, we wrote up the philosophy. I think we actually have slides for that, don't we? Um, but uh, uh, the big driver is that we have some serious philosophical differences around what we're trying to do with what was then Drupal, and now we're calling it Backdrop, what we were imagining Drupal was good for versus where Drupal headed. And the big driver today is that the audience uh, has now officially been defined, that uh, Backdrop says that it's for uh, small, uh, medium-sized businesses, nonprofits, education, small sites, small budgets. That is our target, target audience. And Drupal has defined its target audience finally, officially, as ambitious digital experiences, which many people translate as big budgets. Big, big budgets or enterprise. And so that alone is enough reason to justify a different product, because they're for different people. So anyway, we're trying to make it so that this very first point, preserving the Drupal audience, we're trying to make it so that those people that are within the not target audience now, but historically may have been within the target audience, have somewhere to go. And so that's our objective with Backdrop, still is today. Point number one, still valid. So the software launched um, in uh, January, but the website didn't get launched until April. Um, and we're like, oh, we should, I guess, put up a website and have information so people know what we're doing. Uh, but uh, that Backdrop wasn't Backdrop Back didn't really exist. It didn't, in, wasn't any different. Until it was 2015 in January when it launched. So we're like, well, we need to put up a website, but we don't have software yet. So I guess we'll just build it on Drupal 7 because that's what we're doing here. Um, so we set up uh, backdropcms.org and we set up an API website to parse our code base. So anyone was interested in seeing what we were doing with the code, even though it wasn't out yet, we're welcome to look at the API site and take it for a spin. Um, we also ended up hiring a couple of different designers to make up some assets for us. We needed a logo. Uh, we hired a designer to help us with that. He also helped us with a style guide for the website and general brand guidelines, which was great. And then we hired um, uh, uh, another designer from, I think somewhere nearby, uh, to make us a dragon. And part of that was really important because we thought a huge part of the Drupal community was uh, the Drupalicon, and in particular how different camps and various different organizations could take that icon 
and turn it into something that was their own. They could put a hat on it, change its color, make it have feet or wings or hair or whatever it was, and it became a, a recognizable thing that people could use for their own purposes. And we wanted to have something very similar in the backdrop community, and we're like, oh, we should have some kind of, some kind of animal. There's a lot of debate about what it would be. Um, and eventually we were at Drip Corn Camp, and somebody was like, oh guys, you should use a dragon. And I was like, oh, we definitely need a dragon. Everybody at the table went to like some um, barbecue place or something and everybody around the table was like, yes, 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 we need a dragon. Except for this guy who was like, I don't know, I don't know about dragons. <laughs> um, but I'm like, nine out of 10 triple developers think backup should be a dragon. Surely that's enough. Yeah. So it actually came around. at the very least, I, I do appreciate the pun of the dragon's name being drop. So he's dragon drop. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was going to say it faster. He's dragging drop. Yeah. Dragging drop. Anyway. So. We have stickers for everybody if you didn't get one. If you want the dragons. Ask. Everybody loves dragons, even if you don't love backdrop. Um, okay, so after 15 months of development, we decided to release backdrop one. Uh, this was January 15th, 2015. Yeah, which coincidentally we didn't realize was also the original release date of Drupal 1.0. So we accidentally, for real, made Backdrop 1.0 come out on the same day as Drupal 1.0. So we have the same birthday. So every January 15th, that while, Drupal, a birthday party. while Drupal birthday parties are happening, there is also For the backdrop birthday yeah, parties yeah. happening. So yeah, we, we planned to release it on January first, and there were some people in our community who's like, January first is not a good day to do anything publicity wise because everybody's busy with New Year's and the holidays. We should push that. Like we'll do the fifteenth. We're like, okay. And about the tenth, we realized we had a little conflict, and we're like, eh, it's probably fine. Yeah. So, yay! It's like a little brother born on the same day. Okay, maybe not. Oh, what did I do? Oh, we ended up at the end. Oh, the darn it, reveal. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that? I don't know. I think I hit the trackpad. Yeah. Oh, come on. It's Linux's fault. Oh, jeez. No, don't do this. Go to the <laughs> URL and hit the, we can type in the slide number. I think it was like five. Okay. Yeah, not 65. That's for later. Oh no, we were like 10. There we go. Okay. Number eight. Everything's fine. Okay. Space, Space bar. bar. All right. Uh, so what's in backdrop one? Um, uh, a Drupal compatibility layer. So this is one of our big things about preserving the existing audience. We also want to make it really easy for anyone who's running a Drupal 7 site to be able to run a backdrop site. So we included a compatibility layer so that things like functions that used to start with the word Drupal, now start with the word backdrop, could still work. Uh, this was probably the big driver for 1.0 that was like, uh, actually one of the two key, key killer features. Um, new layout system. So uh, backdrop out of the box uh, in 1.0 years ago, uh, had an equivalent of panels built in uh, and removed the idea of themes having regions and instead now everything is driven by the layout system. Uh, we've given lots of presentations on the layout system. It's definitely the biggest functional driver difference between uh, Drupal 7 and, and, and Backdrop. Uh, it does, but does still provide an upgrade path moving from out of a region-based system to a layout-based system. Uh, views module built in. That's kind of like a given, like a uh, not very, actually not too difficult for uh, moving in, but that also means things like uh, uh, views bulk operations had to be moved in, the listings had to be converted. Um, uh, let's see what other kinds of things. Yes, got converted oh, big. We'll talk about yeah, that the later. action system got changed. The dialogue system is now used. Lots of changes that were all uh, combined together to, to make it so that would happen. We also, dialogue system that Nate just mentioned is something that uh, had, what used to be part of C tools, so we merged in a lot of C tools as well. And configuration management, this is something that people were so excited about. Improvements in Drupal 8, config management, we knew if we were going to release a comparable product, it needed to have the same feature. So we introduced a really early version of configuration management, and then we forked a little bit from how Drupal 8 ended up doing it. So though we have the same feature, it's implemented very differently in ways that's a little bit more in line with our philosophy. So hey, uh, we have a product, we should use it. 
So in January 24th, so this is like nine days after we released Factor Up the Product, we got our API website updated and less than one month afterwards we had our main website upgraded from Drupal 7 to Backdrop. So this is just kind of a, we thought we wanted to do a demonstration of how easy it is to get from Drupal 7 to Backdrop and using our own properties to do so seemed to make the most sense. Can I ask a question about the API module? Is it, would, it, would it technically be able to do an API for Drupal 8 as well? It's the same, the same indexing thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, the API website on, Drupal on Drupal.org is Drupal 7. Right. Yeah, and we're running a port of the same module. Okay. Yes, so yeah, it can index. It, yeah, it can index all of the same same code. Okay. Hey, so May came out, and guess what? That's four months after January, so it's time to uh, practice what we preach here and come up with a new version. So Backdrop One was released. Uh, what did we do in Backdrop 1? We changed the look of the administration theme. So we used to use this theme called 7. We actually still have it in Backdrop, but now it looks different. Sorry, the colors are totally blown out in all of the screenshots, but... It's a slightly different color. Um, we made the links, the font bigger, the links bigger, so they work with your finger on a phone or tablet. Everything's responsive, just a bunch of usability improvements. Um, but we wanted to make it feel different than Drupal. Other things we added, uh, more tokens, a token user interface, path auto, and other stuff, minor things. All right, September, what do we do in the next four months? So we found a, uh, oh, okay, yeah. so vertical tabs are made responsive. We were slowly like going through iterating, making all of uh, backdrop core uh, more mobile friendly. Uh, we added CK Editor to Core. Kind of a, one of the rich ironies of Backdrop is that we released 1.0 without the main feature that I put into Drupal 8. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but we, we followed in uh, there uh, not too shortly after the original release with CK Editor and Core. We also added date, all of the most all of the date uh, submodules sub except for date repeat, repeat uh, link and email module, rounding out kind of the core field functionality. And I guess in, in general, just that uh, our, our approach to putting modules in core varies kind of substantially from Drupal 8 and that our primary objective is making so that you can upgrade easily from Drupal 7 running those same modules. So in the process of porting the modules uh, and making them core compatible, we're trying to maintain as much as possible, but also have it be more you know, tightly integrated into core without it being kind of like feel like it's, it's been bolted on. And that makes it so that those people moving from Drupal 7, all of the equivalent functionality from those Drupal 7 modules moves over directly into the Drupal or into the backdrop version of them because the entire point is to make it so you can get easily from Drupal and, 7 into backdrop. And there's a built-in upgrade path. So you don't have to worry about the module going in, but your data not getting upgraded, which is what happened with fields in Drupal 7. Anything that got put into backdrop core has a built-in upgrade path in core, so you can just get to it quickly. Yeah. So 1.2 also included the first um, use of our packager. Uh, Drupal.org has a similar kind of packaging mechanism, but because all of our code is uh, hosted on GitHub, we had to build out a new kind of system for packaging. And so when GitHub, uh, we still do all of our issue management and all of the code hosting is on GitHub, uh, but now we integrated with webhooks uh, and GitHub system that it sends pings over to backdropcms.org when you create a release. And this works for contrib as well as core. Uh, Backdropcms.org then packages it, uh, does some slight modifications to like the .info files, inserting the, uh, the version information, zips it up, and then posts it back to GitHub for hosting. All right, one year later. Uh, this was a great example of a release where we didn't get a whole bunch of big fancy features in because everybody was really busy over the holidays. Uh, but we're like, that's okay, we've got to release it anyway. What do we have in it? And we looked at what was in it, and there were a ton of little tiny fixes that improved the user experience. And we're like, we're just going to call this a user experience focused release, and we're going to get all the rest of that stuff done, and we're going to create a more polished product. So one release has 32 enhancements specifically to improve the user experience. Oh, and besides, I, I love this feature. This is like one of those like obscure things that we hardly ever talk about, but is really cool um, from a technical side of things. Um, we added background fetching in Backdrop 1.3, uh, background fetching and background processing, which makes it so that when uh, 
back up, finishes the page request and has to do additional tasks afterwards. Uh, it returns the page to the user. It severs uh, the open connection on the Apache side and returns the HTML to the user and then runs background processes after returning the page back to the user. Um, this is most noticeable when uh, doing localhost development where you haven't set up cron and the first time you load up your website in the morning, it just like is loading and loading and loading. It's and you're a Drupal like, site. A Drupal site, yeah. And you're like, what is going on? And then you hit control R, it comes up instantly, right? And what that is, is that's cron running at the end of the request because cron hasn't run in 24 hours since the last time you loaded the page. And so Drupal doesn't return the page request until that all the cron tasks are finished. Even though it does it in a shutdown hook and all these things, it doesn't return the page properly. And so we added this uh, background processing capability that intentionally moves that stuff uh, after the request has been returned. And it makes it so that we can do stuff like um, generate the, uh, uh, the, page, the, the page cache, uh, but we don't actually write it to the database until after we've returned it. So we're only reading, and then we're doing the writing after we've actually re finished generating the page. We also have background fetching. Uh, is that a, yeah, background fetch for faster page cache. That makes it so that um, we pull the page out of the Varnish playbook. Uh, Varnish is Varnish 4. Varnish 4 playbook. That Varnish is the caching software that um, when you're generating the page cache, when the page cache is stale, you go ahead and you, you note the fact that you need to regenerate the cache, but you go ahead and return the stale copy right away. And then you generate a new page after returning the stale copy, and then the next person that comes in gets the fresh one. So there's no slow page load after your cache expires. It's, all, it's just one stale page load, and then the next page load is fast again. And fresh. So, and fresh, yeah. So it makes it so that you can, you can trade off like one page load being extra, one extra page load being stale in exchange for never ever having a slow page response. So backed but, up is faster yeah. than Drupal 7. And a big key thing about integrating something like this, I think it'd be unlikely, you might see a contrib module do this in, in Drupal 8, if it was possible, it might be. Um, but it's unlikely that Drupal would pursue this as being core functionality. Instead, they would probably refer you over and say, You should use Varnish. Just use Varnish. But that's a difference in, in target audience, that, Varna, that Drupal has made enterprise, you should just use another layer, have your DevOps team put another layer on your software stack, use a CDN. And we're targeting specifically for people, people that, that don't, don't have a CDN or don't have a DevOps team. And so this kind of functionality we think is highly critical and important for Backdrop's audience. All right, uh, one of the usability improvements that I love, maybe one of my favorites, is we've put in a big red dot into the administration bar so that if there's anything wrong with your site, you will know immediately. Um, this game comes from Drupal where sometimes that admin message is only visible on the back end of your site and you can do something like apply update without running the update script and click around your site for a while before you discover that there's something wrong. We're like, we're just going to put this dot everywhere and as you all know from using Facebook, if there is a red dot somewhere, you cannot help but click on it. Um, so that's worked really well in our favor for getting people to know there's problems. Um, we changed the node, crea node type creation form to include um, a bunch of different things like your permissions, being able to set a pattern for your URL aliases. Uh, we basically took everything that has a setting for node type and put it on the node type form so that you don't have to go to more than one place in the administration to perform a single task, like creating a node type. And we're trying to create this pattern all throughout course of anywhere that there are more than one place that you can do anything. We can um, make people's instincts of like, oh, I'm going to go here to do something be the correct place to find it, even if it's that same setting as in lots of places. Uh, we also included a transliteration module uh, field blocks, custom text blocks, logging in with email address, so email login module. Login to login. <laughs> uh, improved interface for adding multiple values with, with multiple field remove button module. There's like a bunch of little modules that were improvements to the Drupal UI that we just kind of did the same thing in Backdrop. Yeah, this is, uh, while at the same time as we were doing all of this software work, we also started thinking about how we wanted to organize the overall management of the project. For the first year, it was basically, this is the Jen and Nate show, um, which we didn't ever want it to be 
that. Um, we, we specifically, um, well, at least I, I don't like management positions very much. Like I'm, I, I acknowledge the fact that I'm a developer and running a project is not going to be in my strong suit. It's writing software. And we started looking at models to make it so that this project could survive and be managed by people that were not us, beyond us. And we adopted the model uh, from the Apache projects or Apache community called the Project Management Committee. The Project Management Committee is basically just distributing the authority to a group. Uh, the Project Management Committee, do we have the, the description now? The Project Management Committee um, sets the direction of the project, the principles, the mission, uh, uh, and handles conflict resolution. So it's the overall guiding group for uh, result, like making it so that if there's a problem, like you, you can escalate it to the project management committee. Um, they vote on it, and then that is then the where where authority derives from within the backdrop project. Uh, it's it's been really successful. I really appreciate this this model, and uh, yeah, that's it's been rolling really well. So the next version was Backdrop 1.4, which came out in May 2016. Um, this one included the project installer. This is, I think, one of Angie's favorite modules. It exists for Drupal 7 if you want it. But it basically takes the uh, previous field on the modules page where it was like randomly pasted in a URL as something that might explode your site here. And instead of doing that, um, we provide a browser. So you can search for the module you want. The browser will look through a list provided by backdropcms.org, find the module in the list, give you information about the module, and you can click install without ever having to leave your website and find a URL. Um, we also added a little additional uh, protection and buried that URL box really far away where no one will find it unless they're really looking really hard, hopefully to make the kinds of people who need to use a pointy clicky module installer much safer. Yeah. I mean, all Drupal 7 sites have the ability to install modules, which is kind of crazy, if you have update module turned on, which is like, also crazy. you want update module, but maybe you don't want them to be able to paste in URLs of arbitrary code and run it on your site. Um, we separated out update module from installer module. So you can keep update management and update module, and this is now installer module, so you can turn off installer separately if you don't want that functionality. Uh, we also added a whole bunch of new layouts in Backdrop 1.4, and these were using the Bootstrap 4 grid system, still are, but at the time Bootstrap 4 was not out yet, so we were super cutting edge, um, although it had been in development for like four years, so that's questionable. Um, but this basically made it so that all of the layouts that are in core are really easy to just copy and change the classes, and you can change your column widths, you can make new rows, and it makes it super easy for people who need to get something done quickly to take what's there, use it as an example, <coughs> repeat and get their work done. Oh, and it's also backwards compatible for old layouts. So if you've been using an older version of Backdrop, your old layouts would still work, but the new ones are also there, so it gives you something else to choose from. Uh, we made a bunch of improvements to the layout user interface as well, including uh, changing the way visibility conditions worked, and I think we did some improvements to the dragging, dropping, um, Uh, after we installed Path Auto, we realized we needed to include Redirect module, so we added that one in the next release. We also took what was uh, functionality from Menu Block module in Drupal 7 Contrib and merged it into the core menu blocks in Backdrop. And we made it so that if you're on a mobile device trying to create a node, if you clicked into the image field, it'll give you access to your camera, which is something there's um, a Contrib module for that as well in Drupal 7. Backdrop 5 came out September 15th. Yay, this is very exciting. A new front-end theme uh, by, uh, called Basis that was made by uh, Wes Rubacaba. Uh, so Backdrop no longer looks like Drupal. Yeah, that was very exciting for us. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, look, you're running Backdrop. It looks just like Drupal. And then finally we're like, oh, finally, it's like its own product. So this was really great. Yeah, so this is using the layout system to edit a block on the the front end, and this is just featuring the hero block that comes out of the box, just an easy way to put a hero that has a background image and some text uh, on, on your site that is included right on the front page out of the box. Uh, we also added responsive drop-down menus. We uh, used a library called Smart Menus to make it so that out of the box uh, you have 
hierarchical, responsive drop-down menus touch friendly. that are touch-friendly. Woo! Yay! And keep, keyboard so, navigable. Yeah, just one of those super confusing things about, like, uh, as a new user, you try to make a hierarchical menu, and it's not hierarchical on output. Uh, in Drupal, it just, like, just shows you the top-level links. <laughs> and so it's very natural to assume that you're going to get a hierarchical menu if you drag them into a, a nested structure. So that's great. They also included a default home page layout. This is the most common use case where you have a different layout on your site and every other page. That different layout on your home page needs to be there, so we put that in by default. Um, we put in an existing content block, so you can reference any piece of content that's already on your site. You can place it as a block with any view mode. Um, and we included uh, emoji support. This is the same, this release came out the same time as emoji support for Drupal 7, so we coordinated that. Yep. But different, oh. uh, yeah, and, and another difference, like, it's just crazy, like, the small things that it's all about audience here, that uh, if you guys had Drupal 7 sites, how many people upgraded their sites to include emoji support, their Drupal 7 sites? No. no? Oh. Well, it turns out, it's, <laughs> hey, one person. Turns out it's kind of hard, actually. You have, to, you have to use a drush command in order to update your database tables um, to make it so that they support emoji. Uh, but in Backdrop, we integrated the upgrade path into the user interface. So it, it shows you a, a status button. message indicator saying, hey, you're capable of supporting uh, emojis. Just put this in settings.php. Then you come back and it's like, okay, now you need to run the upgrade. And with, it a does, it, with a button. And it does batch process. You know, so it's, it's uh, highlighting that information that you can support a uh, wider character set in, in the status report and then providing you an opportunity to upgrade it through the user interface. So, uh, uh a button as opposed to a developer command line tool. So different difference in the audience there. All right, Backtrap 1.6. Backtrap is now two years old. Uh, this is where we put in file entity module or most of file entity module. We put in the file entity part. Uh, some of the user interface is still not quite there. Um, and this is because we knew that we needed a better media solution than what's in Drupal 7. So we are currently moving towards lots of media improvements. You'll see um, as we go through here things you can do. Um, but when you insert an image into the body of a page, it has a reference in the files table. So there's like a lot of cleanup there. You can change it in one place and have it update everywhere. Same thing is true for PDF files. Um, all the great stuff you get with having files as entities is, is in uh, Backdrop Core now. We also added a hamburger to our fancy mobile-friendly menu. Again, this is an uh, iteration later. We realized, oh, if we're going to put in this menu, it looks, out, looks like everybody wants a hamburger. Number one question in the forum is, how do I put a hamburger on my fancy new menu? So we're like, oh, we should put that in core. So there's your hamburger. And then we also added um, entity view mode module, but this wasn't something that we just took the module and shoved it in. This was an addition to an existing uh, core system. So there's a couple of different ways that we take contribute modules from Triple seven and put them in backdrop core. Things like date, email, link, we just take the module, stick it in. A little cleanup in user interface, a little cleanup in other ways. Um, things like token, entity view mode, they become part of system modules. So token is a part of system, entity view mode is a part of uh, field UI. So there are things that are just sort of missing pieces of subsystems that we put them where we thought they should be. And then there are things that we just left them exactly as they were with the little module on off button. Um, we added translation support, so this is where we set up our localization server. Yeah, it was the start of the localization server, still working in progress to make the localization server fully integrated with Backdrop Core. I know and automated and and automated. Um, I know it's great in Drupal 8 that you can install Drupal with a new language without having to download the translation file separately. Still working on that because like it requires integration between multiple servers. So. Uh, we do have a, a, essentially a multilingual lead uh, who's heading up making the site, and we have backdrop translations in a couple of languages now um, that are fully translated, which is very exciting to us. But right now, it's all still manual processes, um, including like installing out of the box. But we're getting there. This is exciting. Yeah. yeah so we got forked uh, in <laughs> February uh, 2017. Uh, the if you if you wanted to call it the. Uh, the press flow of, of backdrop backdrop. was created. And so this was uh, one, of, one of our heavy uh, core contributors uh, made a, a fork of backdrop that 
uh, wanted to support more, more database systems and make some performance optimizations that we've been waffling on uh, in the backdrop core queue. And he's like, that's fine. You know, I'll just make my I'll version it. that uh, is like the optimized ones that he'll use on his, his platform. So, so I, he, we removed, um, just in case you guys missed this, we removed support for any database that's not MySQL because that was less than 1% of Drupal users. So again, we're trying to cater to like the largest common denominator, I guess. Um, and he's like, wait, I have a need for running on a non MySQL database. And we're like, well, we don't want to support that. It doesn't meet our use case. And he's like, fine, then I'm going to, I'll support it myself. And so now we have a fork. And he's actually continued to maintain his fork in parallel with ours. And he's been super helpful on most of our core releases, too. So having this fork has been really beneficial to the Backdoor project. Mm -hmm. All right, May 15th, Backdrop 1.7 comes out. It includes uh, new redesigns of several of our uh, administration pages. It's really pretty, I promise. It's just this uh, projector. Doesn't really show you all the fancy colors, but we put in icons and color coded it and we removed all of the like giant green stripes and stuff. Uh, we also added, um, I don't remember what this module is called, CK Editor Advanced uh, Link. Link it, like Link it I think is the common link, name for link it. Link it, yeah, something so like just, that. Making it so you can link to various paths on your site with autocomplete. Uh, drag and drop. Oh no, copy paste. Drag and drop and copy paste. Copy paste upload. So there's a there's a Drupal module for that too. That's only in alpha for Drupal seven. Um, that's pretty exciting. Layout improvements. So again, because the layout system is new, we tend to iterate and improve on layouts with every release. So we included per block per block placement options in the views module. And we made um, a bunch of page elements uh, placeable as blocks. So there's a contrib module for that. Views box was part of the C tools um, views content <coughs> module. Backdrop 1.8 comes out in September. This is another user experience release. Guess what? We care about user experience because most of our users are users um, as opposed to developers. Uh, we redesigned the progress bar in a different color and kind of pretty. Uh, we added color coding into our diff, so this is for configuration management. We stole the uh, colors from GitHub, I believe, and the patterns. So we just took what they did when you do a diff on GitHub and made it match what you do when you get a diff on Backdrop. We added an unpublished indicator, so that was very clear and basis when the content you were looking at hadn't been published yet. We redid the admin, admin listing page. So this is just kind of use of icons and a uh, better fit for our style. We included screenshots in the project browser. So if you're going to install a, a theme, you want to be able to see what the theme looks like before you install it. So browser now includes images. And then uh, Backdrop became three years old. <laughs> I know. There's just just keep rolling. <laughs> All right. So we added the ability to manage files. Uh, so previously, you could upload files, but you couldn't, or you could uh, delete files, but you couldn't actually edit, edit them. them. And so we added the ability to manage in 1.9. This is more of file entity. <laughs> oh, I guess that was it. That oh, was a small well, release. That might have been our only screenshot. <laughs> There's probably other things, but I don't know what they were. Yeah. Um, all right, so in May, Backdrop 1.10 came out. It includes the comment closer module. Uh, this is something that comes in core for WordPress. This is when we started looking at WordPress and going, what is WordPress doing right that we need to do as well? And this is the ability to create a post and say, hey, close comments after two weeks. That prevents um, excess spam issues, which is nice, and uh, decreases the need for constant moderation on a site. We also added scheduled publishing. So this gives you the ability to create a post and say, hey, let's publish this tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And I don't want to have to get up at 6 a.m. and push this publish button on my website. Um, so this is a, something else that's in WordPress core, and uh, it's called the scheduler module for Drupal 7. We also included inline file uploads. Uh, so instead of just being able to drop in an image in your regtext editor degree, you can drop in a link to a PDF file and upload it right there. Um, menu items became translatable and blocks became translatable. So this is after we have the multilingual initiative. People started translating stuff. Imagine that. Um, and we started improving translation in core. September, Backtrack 111 comes out. 
color module. So we ignored color module in the first version of Basis because we're like, oh, that's kind of old and crufty. Maybe we'll find a better way to do it. And then guess what? People needed color module. So we're like, okay, well, let's make color module work with Basis. So we had someone else come in and colorize Basis, which was great. Color module also got a little clamp because it was old and crufty, right? So we redid the user interface. We used HTML5 elements for color, just stuff that um, had been ignored for a while. Got a little love. We had an image browser. So this is also catching up with media, right? Trying to get more of that stuff from media module and core. So like giving people the ability to see image thumbnails and upload them into their content. Uh, we put back con con content preview. So in Backdrop 1.0, we deleted content preview because it didn't work. Um, but then we realized that people like previewing content, imagine that. Uh, so we put in a version that does work. And this is a little different than most of the preview solutions in Drupal and that it shows you a live rendering of your actual website, including placement of blocks and layouts in addition to just the content you're looking at. So I think there's something called Live Preview, a module that does the same thing. That's what um, we've got something similar in, in Backdrop. Also gives you the ability to preview different view modes of your content. So if you want to see it as a full page or as a teaser, you can see those differences. Also, a uh, rabbit hole module went into core. Um, this is because in Backdrop, our blocks are configuration and not content. And so we wanted people to be able to have content style blocks. And so because we have the ability to have place existing content, you can just use nodes as blocks as long as their paths can be hidden. So we made it so paths can be hidden in core. We also did a whole bunch of improvements to contact module, speaking of things that are old and crufty. Mm -hmm. um, we had someone who was super passionate about making that work and look better for everyone. Um, I don't know what the client side upload progress bars are. I didn't work on that. You used to have to, uh, it required a PHP extension in order to get a progress bar while uploading a file, but that's totally unnecessary this day and age. JavaScript can do all of that. So we removed the requirement and actually even the recommendation that you install the PHP extension and just say, no, nope, client side, everybody now has progress bars, which is nice. And then this is the biggest one. We put in the ability for Backdrop Core to update itself. So we didn't actually make it usable because we wanted to test it first. In order to test it, it had to exist. So first we put it in so it existed, and then we were able to do some testing as a core team, and then later on we turned it on. Yeah. So, so the ability went in. It was hidden from end users by like a configuration flag. So although it was possible to self-update, you really had to know what you were doing in order to turn on that ability. And that allowed us to have one release, 1.11, uh, and then the subsequent bug fixes to actually test backdrop updating itself with the whole thing, all the whole system combined. So, guess what happens in 112? We turned on the updates. <laughs> um, so yeah, now there's a checkbox where if you want people to be able to push a button and say update core, you can check the box and then the button will appear when updates come out, which is great. So this is part of update module where you, same thing you used to update your themes and layouts, you can now update backdrop core. Yeah. And to be clear, this isn't automatic updates. No, just This is just manual up core updates yeah. can be done. So you have to push the button. Yeah, there, there actually is a checkbox here that's right below it. You can't even tell these are checkboxes on the screen, but uh, it says automatic self updates and it's a disabled checkbox. Uh, it says coming soon. It says coming soon because ultimately that that's will be supported. Um, but uh, we want to test this for a while. Yeah, one one step at a time. Yeah. So this this means you're ahead of Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. Yes. At least as far as this is concerned, yeah. And some other things. Well, we're also behind in some areas. Yeah, That's and why it's important. In this, this instance. Yeah, yeah. And, and in this particular instance, we have a kind of a large advantage in that we're a lot simpler, like, we, and we're not composer based, uh, and so composer is both a blessing and a curse. And as far as automatic updates, yeah, I mean, given having Drupal control composer is probably the direction that they're heading, but that it's a whole can of worms, and so uh, backdrop doesn't have any dependency on Composer whatsoever, and so updating core is uh, no more difficult than updating a contrib module in Drupal 7. So Drupal 7 has had the ability to update its own contrib modules, although not as commonly used uh, by developers. Um, making it so that that same system works on core was practically trivial. So there's, it's, it's very simple, like download a new tarball, replace it. So very simple, direct updating mechanism. 
runupdate.php. Yeah, and then, and then direct to update.php. Thank you. Uh, we also added a contrib module called optionets element. This used to affect only web form components in Drupal 7, but we made it work on field UI so that you no longer have to type key pipe value into a massive text area. This gives you a nice key value entry system. You can hide the keys, you can make custom keys, you can make new numeric keys, um, a little more user friendly because our users are not developers, we think. Icons, we love icons. Um, so does Drupal. They were way ahead of us in this area. They had nice fancy icons in their admin bar. Uh, we wanted fancy icons in our admin bar, so we added them. Uh, we also implemented CSS grid, so if you use a views grid display, you now get a CSS grid for that. Um, unless you have a box check saying use legacy table, which might be useful if you have themed your tables. <coughs> We also took those contact module improvements and made a block you can place in any region on any page. It's pretty common these days you see a contact form in the footer. Now it's really easy to get that done on your backdrop site. Uh, and we continued including tran translation, so taxonomy terms are now translatable now. Uh, I just said that twice. And tags for modules, so this is a really long-standing issue in backdrop, it was issue number 37. Um, and we, there's a lot of uh, bickering and differing opinions and who is this page for and what are we trying to do for it. And so we just decided lowest common denominator, something every, everyone agreed on, is that the package is not sufficient. Like you have a module that might be several different things. Um, maybe it's a, a statistics module and it's a commerce module and it's an add-on or whatever. And so you can put however many tags you want to categorize that module. If someone's searching for it later, they can search for commerce or statistics and it'll come up in both. Um, so, a little improvement to the modules page. What are we doing right now? So, in uh, just under a month, the next version of Backdrop will come out. Over a month. Over, well, it's under smart. a month, she'll code freeze, I guess. Still over a month. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it seems soon. Uh, we're working on a bunch of new uh, features. Uh, we took out Drupal 7's dashboard module because we did not like it. Nobody used it. And we are going to put in a different da dashboard module that we hope people will both like and use. Um, this is based on a contrib module in Drupal called Total Control, which is panels and views. And since we have panels and views, we'll just put sort of the same thing in. We're also planning on putting in a telemetry module. And this is based mostly on uh, what's in Joomla about what information any given site will report back to Backdrop. So what modules you have enabled, what your settings are in your given site. It'll give us some more information about what do people actually want their Backdrop sites to do in the future? What are they using now? What is safe to remove? What is not safe to remove? What should we improve? Because right now we've got a lot of sites that are running Backdrop, but the number of people in the queue who are working on it are much fewer. And so how do we know how to serve those people who don't yet have a voice in our community? And this will help give us a lot of valuable data. Yeah. At the very least, like the main key thing that we would like to collect is like what version of PHP are, are these backdrop sites running on, right? Because uh, I, our, our compatibility is 5.3 and forward, so we support a wide breadth of them. Um, because uh, even, even though PHP 5 is officially not supported anymore, uh, it's still like the default PHP 5.4 is still the version of PHP you get in the current release of Red Hat, for example. And so anybody that's using Red Hat Enterprise Linux, like right out of the box, like you can't install Drupal, <laughs> which is uh, you know kind of a big deal um, because PHP lasts a lot longer than it may seem uh, based on the official support because of vendor support. And so figuring out what versions are actually being used is really important to us. We also added a couple more contrib modules from Drupal 7. Save draft is something now that we have fancy drafts and scheduling. People want to be able to save them. Um, so that'll clean up the uh, node edit form a little bit. And field formatters module, um, which is field formatters from Drupal 6 that were excluded from Drupal 7, we're going to put back in. And a lot of that is because most backdrop users today were coming from Drupal 6, or I don't know about most, a lot of them. And so they have features they feel like are missing because they were missing in Drupal 7. And more. Um, there's obviously a bunch of little tiny issues that we get into every every release that aren't like exciting enough to make our big bullet list. But if you're curious about everything we're working on, every release we work on on Backdrop has a milestone on GitHub, and issues that we're working on s scheduling for that release go into that milestone. 
Um, if they get done, that's great. If they don't, they get kicked to the next one. For things that are big core features, they get kicked twice. And if they go to get kicked a third time, they get removed from the uh, milestone queue because we feel like if they're not important enough to get work done in a year, then they're maybe not a priority for our community. Keeps our issue queue nice and short. What next? Let's see. <laughs> So within the 1.x branch, um, and, and just in general, the 1.x branch, we previously had been talking about Backdrop 2, like years ago, saying, oh, well, what's going to be in Backdrop 2? What's going to be in Backdrop 2? And we kept coming up with all these features that were like, oh, this feature definitely is worth calling it Backdrop 2. But then we kept finding that oh, there wait. was... We can put that in now. Yeah, there was no reason to wait and no reason to break API. So why bother with Backdrop 2 when you can just keep going, right? Um, so as long as we can maintain backwards compatibility and it doesn't become overly onerous, there's no real reason to create a 2.0 that would potentially introduce a bunch of uh, backwards compatibility breaks. So more and more things just keep getting added to 1.x, basically. So uh, automatic updates, you know, we've been talking, we're progressing uh, towards that end goal. Uh, centralizing the config translation system, right now we're still basically doing the same thing as Drupal 7, that we're running variables through T. That's the way all things like field labels are translated in Drupal 7, it's the way they're translated in Backdrop. And we're uh, centralizing that to make it so that config files can say these things are translatable to make it uh, more friendly to uh, translation extraction so that things can be translated in, that start out in config. Uh, references, we still don't have a core like version of entity reference or user reference or References. References just in general. So that's a big item that's been plaguing us for a long time that we would like to solidify that. We do have those three modules. Though. Yes, we, we have, have the contrib all versions contrib of all versions. of them. <laughs> so, which is useful for upgrading because it's going to be the same module, but it's not great for like having Longevity one standards. thing. And we need something in core. So uh, we have yet to figure that out fully. Uh, fieldable file types, files are entities and they're managed as such, but they're not fieldable currently. So we've got some things that we're still working on uh, for the foreseeable future for 1.x. But what about 2.x? Nate mentioned a minute ago that we were thinking that 2.x would break APIs, um, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case anymore. We've been talking to a bunch of other people managing other projects about how they handle major version updates. Symphony, for example, with every new version just removes everything that's marked as deprecated. And since we're getting really good at adding in new stuff and marking old stuff as deprecated, we could choose to make Backdrop 2 a release that just removes everything that's deprecated and carries on with its API compatibility. Uh, we've also had some crazy harebrained ideas, mostly mine, about making Backdrop support both 1.x and 2.x modules when 2.x comes out. So anyone who had a 1.x module would still be able to run that module with no upgrade on Backdrop 2. That would require some significant changes to core itself and some protections in the modules to make sure that everything will work smoothly, but it is theoretically possible. And then also we could stick to the old school Drupal 7 traditional pattern where Backdrop 2 comes out and maybe everything is broken. <laughs> So we've got some thinking to do about ways that we want to make upgrades easier on our community, knowing that they're less likely to be developers. Uh, and so we're looking at Symphony style as being very attractive, uh, running two versions of modules, giving people more time to get updated as being sort of attractive. And the current style is easiest because we don't have to change anything, is maybe not the best fit for our audience. And that's it uh, for the general. I know that it's like five years of action all, all at once. Sorry if it was a little monotonous at times. But uh, we've got uh, six minutes here. Uh, if you guys have any questions, so we'd love to answer. What contrib modules are there? So we currently have uh, 350 contributed modules ready. Uh, more than 64 of them are now in core. So those are not contributed anymore. They're now just part of Backdrop. And if you look at the backdrop-contrib GitHub group, there's a hundred more that are in development that aren't currently uh, out with official releases. How about Webform? We have Webform. Yes. With an upgrade path. Yep. Great. Fantastic. We have most of the top modules for Drupal. We have a different slide and different presentation that shows like our top, what is it, top 50 modules or something, and there's two that aren't ready for backdrop. One of them is localization update, which is underway. 
and the other one was views PHP, which we hope not to have, but we probably will. I think uh, <laughs> uh, field collection. I oh yeah, we yeah. don't have field collection, but we do have multi-field and paragraphs. Yeah. So there are upgrade paths. How are you doing with works. getting um, Backdrop put into things like uh, Installtron and in Softaculous? They, Backdrop is in both Installtron and Softaculous. Unfortunately, those are not open source projects and we can't contribute to them. So if you click a one-click installer to get Backdrop installed, you probably get a version that's several versions old. Yeah, like 1.4 or something. Every like time that, we have yeah. a new version, I go and be like, hey, we have a new version. How do I update the thing? And then there's like crickets on the other end. So I think they're, they, they don't, we do releases much faster than they do. So it's really hard for them to keep up on t with them. Um, our version. But you were making a good point that Softaculous uh, and other things are used by shared hosts to install open source projects and that that's the audience that we're trying to serve. And so making it so that you can spin up a, a backdrop site easily on any Namecheap site or GoDaddy hosting or whatever, that's definitely our goal. And making it so that the automatic updates uh, are available out of the box will make those kinds of right, platforms safer. more viable and safer to use. Because they'll so, be able to install it, click update, and then their site will keep them up to date even if Installtron doesn't know there's a new yeah, version. So our head is in that space, but it's not, the implementation right now isn't where we want it to be. So would it right help if people like myself contacted them and said, why don't you give us a current version of Backdrop? Yeah, Maybe. more, more, because uh, appara apparently bugging them is the way to make things happen. <laughs> well, they're, they're sometimes slow on the Drupal updates. Yeah, yeah when you that's true. contact and they, oh yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 so, that, so that would be helpful. <laughs> What's the speed of like, like the testing framework there? How do you So we're using exactly the same testing yeah. framework in yeah. core as so the question, the question was, uh, um, what's the status of testing frameworks, and what are we doing? Te how are we doing testing in Backdrop? So we're doing the same thing as Drupal Seven um, in in Core. We are using a service called uh, Zen CI, which is equivalent to, I guess, Drupal Test Me, where with every pull request against Core, we get a sandbox where we can test things. Um, but we do not have um, PHP unit testing or JavaScript testing. Yeah, we're still still same as Drupal Seven, running along with simply test or simple test. Uh, we do have, uh, our, our test running is uh, really fast. Really fast. We can run the entire test suite, for which is equivalent to all of Drupal 7's test plus suite, plus modules. views and all the contrib modules that we've put in. It runs in five minutes, the complete test suite, which is, which is pretty amazing. Um, but that's actually due to optimizations in the testing code rather than like it's not ac it's not actually backdrop being like 50 times faster than Drupal 7. Well, it's tests being 50 times faster. But the te but the tests are a hell of a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Uh, is there any interest or reason for backdrop to, to start using the object oriented programming? So we are more object oriented than Drupal 7, but we have not decided to eliminate all non object oriented code. Correct. So we use it where it makes the most sense to use it, but we don't just change it for the sake of making it consistent. Yeah, and some things that we, we've uh, added. Um, all, layout system. Yeah, the, the entire layout system is all object-oriented. Views obviously was object-oriented previously, and that kind of serves as a model for, not quite a model, because views object-orientedness is a little crazy, but um, uh, there's uh, the mix of procedural and object-oriented code we have no problem with. Um, all of our entities are true objects now, so there's no like node arrow save, but we didn't eliminate the procedural ones. So there's still node underscore save. We sort of took a page from PHP where they have like both the procedural date functions and the object oriented date functions, and we figured that audience is going to be a better map to our audience anyway. So we have procedural wrappers around Great. objects. Yep, yeah. and in many cases, um, like blocks for example, they're still hook based blocks, hook block view and hook block form which is weird with the switch on delta, but you can also, uh, in hook block info, you can use a class instead if you want. Uh, but the old procedural method is actually now just wrapped in a class, so it still, so it still works. So We've got the backwards compatibility in there, so if you have a Drupal 7 module you want to run in backdrop that uses the hooks, it'll still work, but if you want to write a fancier new style block module, you can do it that way too. Yeah, we, yeah so just in general, we like object-oriented code. Um, we're just not, wholesale ripping everything out to replace it with object oriented code. Thank you. Yes? How do you handle like security releases or is there excellent question. Supervisory security test? Yes. So uh, we are on the Drupal security team and by we I mean Nate. 
Um, but <laughs> we co-release Drupal, uh, uh, Backdrop security releases the same day as Drupal. So if there's a core release for Drupal, there's a core release for Backdrop on the same day. That same thing holds true for a lot of the contrib modules that are in uh, Backdrop core. So if there's a security release for views in Drupal 7, there's gonna be a security release for Backdrop on the same day. So all of our core stuff is, is uh, coordinated. The contrib stuff we do proactively or reactively instead of proactively. So we have a backdrop security team that watches all of the releases that come out for all of contrib in Drupal. And if there's a Drupal module that also has a backdrop equivalent that has a security release, our team will contact the maintainer of the backdrop module and say, hey, there's a security release for this module. Are you aware of it? Are you working on it? And if we don't hear anything, we are empowered to make that release on their behalf. So all of our contrib stuff will be staying secure even if the contrib maintainers are um, on vacation. Okay, well, we're all out of time. Uh, thank you guys all very much, and we appreciate you guys being here today. <laughs>